Hello, and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. For good morning, people for the tube, purple today with Fiend Grant, Animals When Your World. Uh, I apologise about my mood, I forget to go. I'm not in a good place mentally at all, so I do apologise about that. But this guitar has helped. This is a brand new guitar that uh, I received uh, yesterday. Well, it was yesterday now. We're in the future when this video comes out, so it wasn't yesterday then. Makes sense in somebody's world. Maybe mine, I don't know. I don't know what makes sense in my world anyway. Anyway, this is an antiquity uh, SG copy. I think it's called the GS1. Let me just double check that, actually. I want to get it right. Yeah, the antiquity GS1. And um, I've been wanting to try one of these for ages. Every time I've gone to buy one of these things in the past, it's been out of stock, which might tell you something. Um... Neither to say, uh, sadly to say, should I say, not neither to say. Again, my words are going to be a bit squiffy today, people with you. They always are, but even more so for today, because my brain is in not the right place. But um, neither to say, this wasn't a love story from the get-go. Kind of is now, but and it's getting there. But from the get-go, there was problems. But yeah, this is a GS1 Antiquity Series. This is £159, I believe, which is a hell of a price. Yeah, 159 quid from PMT. I think it's that own in uh, like live-in brand uh, guitar, and it's awesome. I, I've always wanted an SG with the bat wing pick guard. I don't really like the half scratch plate, like the smaller scratch plates on SGs. I really like the back the bat wing, and I really like it when it's a really deep kind of red as well, which is what this is. You can you can really see on on the camera. Even even the camera's picking up how gorgeous this thing looks. Also, another thing I wanted people to achieve with an SG is a bound neck. And a lot of cheap budget SGs you get don't have bound necks. And um, so that was always something that kind of like really bothered me with some of the SGs I've had in the past and I've demoed on this channel is there was no binding on the neck. And I really like that. I like the feel of binding. It, it, you know, it makes makes my hand happy. And uh, so this one does. This one has binding. So as far as I know, uh, I think it's a popular body. Um, I'm, I'm, it's an Indian laurel fretboard, uh, which is actually, you know, it's actually quite nice and dark, but I had something to do with that. It didn't come that way. Um, you got kind of like two kind of like moderate, you know, kind of fairly low to moderate output humbuckers on it. It's usual wiring, two volumes, two tones, freeway selector. Um, the fretboard radius is supposed to be a 12, 12 inch radius. Uh, to me... It seems way flatter. It's like a 14, I think, personally. But again, I haven't actually measured it. But it's a lot like my Ibanez Gem. Uh, it doesn't feel like a 12. You know, it feels a hell of a lot flatter. Um, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, this guitar, the neck is fantastic. I say the fretwork is really, really good. I've got something to say about that in a second. I just want to get the good parts out of the way, and then we'll talk about some of the negatives. Pickups are fantastic. This guitar sounds amazing. And it plays amazing as well. Again, we'll get to negatives in a second. But uh, yeah, I, and also another thing I really, really love people with Tube is um, this SG is a lot fatter than normal SGs. It's actually really heavy. This guitar is really heavy. I would say it's upwards of eight and a half pounds. And the really cool thing about that is there's no headstock dive. And also if you get a really good strap, um, you don't feel the weight. It's not heavy once it's on a good strap. If you're on like a, if you're on like a, a cheaper strap or like a not particularly great strap, this one's quite good because it's padded. Uh, you really start to feel the weight of this thing quite, quite rapidly. Whereas if you got a good strap, then this thing doesn't really weigh anything, and you can happily stand up for quite a while with it and be comfortable. Um, I haven't played an SG properly in ages. The last time I played an SG was at ATB, and I, I sat down and played it. I didn't stand up. And uh, I'm still getting reused to the fact of an F chord is all the way up here. Normally it's there, but because of obviously where the neck is and the access, it, it, everything's a bit weird. Anyway, but do I love it? Damn right I love it. Will it be with me forever? Good question. Don't know at this point in time. You'll definitely probably see it again if I'm doing amp or pedal demos. Um, for this point in time, I have no desire to get rid of it. I have no, even with the negatives, which I'll get to in a sec, even with the negatives, it's still not a guitar that I kind of like immediately want to shift on. It's one of those songs, where I, one of those songs, one of those guitars where I'm like, I'm going to live with you for a while. I'm just going to leave you 
lying around the place and um, just plonk around on it and see where we end up. So, like I say, I do love it, but let's talk about the negatives. Out the box, awful setup. Awful setup. I, I would have to say this is one of the worst setups I've ever had on a budget guitar. And I don't say that lightly, and I, I don't want to bash this guitar because it's amazing. But what I will say is, out of the box, it was very, very difficult to play. The fretboard was dry as a bone. Absolutely, it almost looked like a maple neck. It was almost white. The neck had such a, an upward bow in it. It was insane. The action down this end, no word of a lie, people tube was about that high. It was ridiculously high. To the point where I actually thought I might not be able to get the bridge low enough to get the, to the, to the strings to the action I actually even want. And at that point, I was like, well, I, what I'll do is I'll wind the, tr the bridge down. I won't touch the truss rod just yet. I'll wind the bridge down and see where it bottoms out. Because to be honest with you, it didn't look like there was a lot of movement in the bridge that I could even get the strings low enough. And I was really worried. And I was basically like, if I can't get the strings to the... If, if they're really high when the, string, when, when the bridge bottoms out, it's going back. Luckily, as I wound the posts down... There was about, you know, maybe about half a turn left until it bottomed out. The strings were pretty good. And I thought, right, the rest of the way can be the truss rod. Because, like I say, the neck wasn't a little bit upbowed. It was severely upbowed. Like, really, again, I've had a lot of budget guitars come my way. And I've bought a lot of budget guitars. I've never seen a, such a bad upbow in the neck. And, I, again, I don't like doing negati negativity things. I don't like doing it. But I've got to be honest with you, people, too, haven't I? Otherwise, what's the point? So the neck on this thing was just like that. Anyway, I got the bridge to kind of like where I wanted it. And it was kind of pseudo where I wanted the strings. And I thought, if I tweak the truss rod just a couple of turns, job will be a good one. So took the truss rod cover off and started tweaking the uh, truss rod. At that point, I was like, right, well, I can't send this back now, can I? So let's just do what we can with it. Uh, and literally, the truss rod wasn't even engaged. Uh, I don't know if it's dual action truss rod I actually looked. Either way, it was actually loose. When I put the Allen key in it, I could just like knock the Allen key around and it, it, the, the, the truss rod nut would just jiggle about the place. It wasn't even engaged, hence the back, uh, the, the upward bow. And also the guitar was in tension as well. And God knows how long it had been that way. So anyway, tightened the truss rod. Once the truss rod bit, it was about maybe about half a turn. Well, maybe just shy of half a turn and the neck went whoop. Like that. Not quite straight, because I don't like that anyway. I actually got it too straight to start with, and I, I backed it off, like, you know, a little fraction of a turn, just to give it a little bit of relief, like I like. And then the strings came back down, and job was a good one. Problem is here, I would still I would still say this action is still too high for a beginner. If you're a beginner, you don't want strings this high. You know what I mean? Because you won't have a finger strength for too long to play the thing. It's a big neck on this thing. It's very, very wide. Um, it's not a skinny neck at all. To me, I wouldn't say this is a beginner's guitar, personally. This is a guitar that kind of like is your next one up from a beginner, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, you get another guitar to kind of like, you know, to, to, to bash around on that's really easy to play. And then you go on to something like this. It's got a bit of more weight in the body, a bit of a bigger neck, you know, a bit more kind of, you know, uh, kind of things you've got to tweak after you've learned a bit more. And also when you've got your finger strength up as well. Because it is a big, it is a big, I mean, I love love the neck on this thing. It's fantastic. I say, especially with the binding as well. So, so that was a problem. That was like, I was a bit annoyed about that as well. I was a bit like, oh, for God's sake. Um, the bridge, the tailpiece here, one side was wound out more than the other. So it was a kind of like, it was kind of a bit kind of like over it. I know some people do that. Uh, slash his Les Pauls. You can see his tailpieces like that. I don't feel that was what was going on here. I think it was just like someone had screwed it in all the way. Um, I like the tailpieces down on the body. Uh, I've experimented with kind of like, you know, top wrap and also kind of having the uh, the, the screws out so the, the break angle is less drastic. But I find that I prefer the sound of the guitar and the way it feels and resonates when this tailpiece is screwed down. Um, not tight. Again, never screw anything down tight. That's that's just a 
that's just a recipe for disaster. Especially with sound, it'll just close the guitar up. But I like it down. I quite like drastic break angle. Um, one thing I will say is intonation was good. That is one good thing. Um, so the intonation was good. Like I say, the wiring's good. The pots feel great. The switch feels great. The pickups sound amazing. The tone controls sound great as well. They really work. Uh, so let's go on to a fretboard here. Uh, so when I got the net, when I got the guitar, when I took it out, I say that it's Indian Laurel. The fretboard is. It's not rosewood, although it dark it darkened off really nicely. But when I got it, no word of a lie, it looked like almost white. It was so dehydrated. The wood was so dry. Um, so basically, and, and also the strings it came with were god awful. Not only were they like a million miles off the board when I took it out of the box, but like they were awful strings. Absolutely awful. They were just like, I think they were like nines and they were just like really awful for, to bend on. They felt rough to the touch. It just wasn't good. So uh, it's got Deodario 10s on it now, and it's a lot happier. Uh, machine heads were loose as well. All the buttons, you don't want them tight, tight, the buttons on the machine heads, but these were just ridiculous. They rattled. They actually moved. I thought they were going to fall off. You know, it was just, again, it, it, it really, really upset me. And I was like thinking, this is a great guitar. This, it, it, what's letting it down is a setup. And again... I don't know about other ones in this Antiquity series. I have, this is the first one I've tried. Um, I'm going to have to buy another one. Makes me very happy. Just to see if that one comes like this one. It, it, this might have just been a Friday afternoon guitar where the guy just kind of like he was building it and kind of wanted to just go over, just kind of slapped it together and thought, yeah, there you go. You know, and didn't really care about it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to the fretboard. Frets were terrible as well. Uh, uh, like, you expect for 159 quid, the frets to be a little bit scratchy, but these weren't scratchy. These were almost full on kind of like, you know, they're going to wreck your strings. If you don't polish them up, they're going to wreck your strings because they were so rough. Um, you know, it was a nightmare. So like I say, this guitar for me, uh, also the nut was cut extraordinarily badly as well. The, the like open chords, it, it was really hard to press the strings down. Like, you know, to get an open chord to sound in tune, was a nightmare, so I've recut the nut, and uh, in all fairness, I want to change the nut because I don't know what it is, but it's it's really cack. And also, the nut slot, the nut slots were just full, absolutely full of leftover plastic from when they cut it. Like the strings, they they could not pass through evenly. It was a nightmare. So, and again, so what I did was, like I said, I polished the frets. I I used the Crimson Guitars fretboard restorative. On the on the on the fretboard, which again is the only stuff I use. Not endorsed. It's just simply a fact of it's the best stuff I've ever used, and will always use it. Um, and it just made it gorgeous. It made it really dark and like it just literally. I let it sit for five minutes with it on, um, and I had to, I had to put about two or three layers of it on. The first layer that I put of Crimson Guitars fretboard is how just how dry it was. That stuff I put it on and it just went vroom, and disappeared. And the neck still looked bad. So I put another load on, it started to get better. And then I put a third on and it started to get, you know, spot on. And I just left it at that point and it just worked a treat. Uh, also using the, the fret portion rubbers as well. It, it just was like, you know, it made the fretboard infinitely better. Uh, there was no fret sprout though, no rough edges. The frets are level. They're really good. Once I had done the fret polishing and got everything, like got, got the truss rod sorted, got the action where I wanted it, got decent strings on it, this guitar came to life. Once the nut, not everything, tightened the machine heads up slightly. This guitar just came to life and literally, you know, was it, it's just, it's a wicked guitar. I love it to bits. Like I say, it is heavy. It's a popular body. I believe it's... Um, I don't know if it's a mahogany neck or a maple neck. I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't know. Uh, like I say, I don't really care about what things are, as long as the guitar plays good and sounds good and does what I want it to do. That's all I really care about. Anyway, another thing as well, people of YouTube, is this. Um, I've moved the strap button because let me just get the strap off. So, so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the strap button was initially here on this neck heel. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Maybe if I get it in the light, and I've moved it there because there. Not to be funny is bloody stupid, because if your strap's there, when you come down here to the dusty end like where I like to be, 
you can't get down here because the strap's in the way. It reminds me of an old Tysco thing. Some old Tyscos used to put their strap button right on the neck and you couldn't get any higher because, again, I don't think you were supposed to, but I like being down here. I like the access, and uh, that's the point of an SG is like you got in amazing access to the last fret. So to have the strap button there is really stupid. So I've moved it back there. So other than that, I haven't done anything to it. I, I like I say I haven't done the intonation. Didn't have to. It was good enough. It was you know it, it plays in tune. That's all that matters. I've set the action where I want it. I uh, also just did the height of the pickups to where I wanted it. But again, this is all personal preference. My main issue was say taking it out of the box and it just being basically unplayable. Like, if you were a beginner, like, never touched a guitar in your life, you ordered this guitar because, you know, like, you know, you're an Angus Young fan or whatever, and you got this guitar, took it out of the box, and had no idea of how to set up a guitar, what you should do with it, this would be a nightmare. This would be a nightmare. You would struggle, you would send it back, and you would go, I'm never trying one of those again. It would really it sour the taste. It almost did me as well. When I when I first realised like the strings were so high, I was like, and I looked at the bridge and realised realised it was nearly bottomed out. The strings that high, the bridge nearly bottomed out. That's that's an automatic. You're going back, mate. But when I checked the neck and found that that upward bow was that bad, I was like, right, that's not good enough. Um, and again, God knows how long it sat like that. It's really starting to level itself out now as well. It's really. Tuning-wise, extraordinarily stable for an SG style guitar. Again, I think it's because the body is really, really thick. It's um, I would say it's a little bit fatter than a normal SG. It's it well, it definitely feels like it. And I say the neck's a bit bigger, uh, neck's bigger as well. But it's a great guitar. But again, bear that in mind. If you like what you see here and you like what you hear here, bear that in mind of what I had to do to get this thing to where it is. You know, it, it took me a good hour hour and a half, give or take, to get this where I wanted it so I could play it comfortably. If you're a beginner with no idea about fret polishing, fretboard conditioning, how to set things up, intonation, how the bridge, the tailpiece should be, where the bridge should be, how the nut needs to be cut, uh, you haven't got new strings, you don't know, you know, how to tighten machine head buttons up, you would send it back. You'd just be like, imagine getting it on Christmas Day. Like, you imagine it's your first guitar and you're like, you know, you, you, you're 12 years old or 10 years old or whatever. And this is your first guitar that mum and dad have saved up for. And you get it out of the box and you can't even play a chord on it because it's just ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's like, I know there's some people saying, well, it's £159 guitar. It's like, yeah, but I've had guitars that are cheaper than this and better than this. that out of the box. So it's not the point. You know, it, it, and also, like I say, if you're going to market these things at beginners, make sure they're beginner friendly, is my point. You know, you can't send a guitar out with an action that high, neck like this, and um, everything loose to a beginner. You know what I mean? You're going to be you're going to be getting an email saying, we want a refund, please, because this guitar's cack. Um, that aside, if you do know what you're doing, if you buy this for your for your kid or for yourself and you do know what you're doing with it, it's an hour it's an hour's work to get it spot on. And once it's spot on, my god is it spot on. But anyway, I'm gonna shut up talking here because I've been talking for day 20 minutes. That's insane. I do apologize for you. Um But I wanted to get everything in in the video. I don't I don't wanna just kinda of go, yeah, it's great when it when it when it hasn't been great. It is now. I love it to bits, and hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy the music. Come out of this thing because it it just took me away. It really did, and the guitar feels happy now. Anyway, people of YouTube, if you've got one of these antiquities, you know, one of these things from PMT, can you please let me know what your experience was with it? Was it good? Was it bad? Please let me know in the comment section below because this one was not good. It was a, definitely it felt like a Friday afternoon guitar where the guy assembling it just went, yeah, that'll do. Shoved it in a box, sent it off. And that's really, really sad because this guitar is amazing. But it's amazing now. Uh, now I've got it to how I want it to be and also got like some of the things that, like you know, to be honest with you, I reckon should have been ironed out in the factory. Anyway, I'm going to shut up, leave you with the music, this thing that came out of this thing, and I'm just going to go and wallow in whatever. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope, you enjoyed this, I hope you enjoyed this vid. I hope it was somewhat informative. I've been, like, I've been wanting to review one of these things for ages just haven't been able to get one. But now we're here, and like I say, it's not going anywhere for a while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit on it for a while. And it's exactly what I want in an SG. It really is bat wing, bound neck, cherry, you know, really dark cherry red. So uh, we'll see where we are in a couple of months. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this channel, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Uh, links to that in the description, I suppose, as well as links to my band. Please, if you can, go over and subscribe to my band uh, and uh, like the videos on there and stuff we got. And uh, yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you later. Goodbye now.